So you are sick of having so much stuff. You are tired of the clutter. It is surrounding you and you are overwhelmed and you just don't know what to do. I think I have an answer for you. And I think that you need to join the revolution. Now, if this is your first time here, my name is Robin. I help overwhelmed people simplify their lives through organization, productivity, and in creating an environment where you can thrive. Now grab your tea and let's go. Now, so many of us struggle with just having so much darn stuff. Now, we may not realize what a burden it truly is for us. So I myself took years to understand what the problem actually was. Now, when my kids were little, I would always try to clean. And I'm afraid there are going to be a lot of air quotes in this. This involved moving things around, creating piles and organizing. <laughs> It even got so bad that when I would come home from working in the emergency room as a nurse where people were dying and trying to die and there were really traumatic things happening, I would come home from that stressful, stressful environment. Then I would actually start cleaning my house because it just felt so messy. It wasn't that refuge that I needed at the end of such a stressful day. I was managing my stuff, which does not feel good. And I was also completely overwhelmed and I honestly didn't even know how to keep on top of things. So working full time, taking care of my family, I had no time for hobbies, no time for fun. And I really was just trying to keep the house clean and going to work. So one day I recognized that my stuff was actually holding me back. So I started decluttering, which I kind of started the wrong way. It basically led me to continue to repeat the same problems over and over again. For example, I thought, I just need more storage furniture. Ikea, here we come. Instead of recognizing that it wasn't a lack of storage, but it was an overabundance of stuff. Have you ever been organizing things only to find that you are completely frustrated? So many things don't even have a category. We keep them because they are sentimental. One example is a small trinket that you might get in your Christmas stocking. Perhaps it is a metal puzzle that you find in your stocking. I'm only speaking from an example. This didn't actually happen to me every single year. Anyway, now you may be moving this little thing around your house for years, from this drawer to that one, then from this box to another one, and then into another drawer. You keep it because it is sentimental. You got it at Christmas after all. I mean, it reminds you of something. The thing is, it's actually not sentimental. It just reminds you of something. It reminds you of Christmas. You might not even be able to identify which Christmas. We need to redefine what is sentimental. Sentimental items are not everything that reminds you of something. And I'm not going to get into that too much because I have a couple of other videos on that. But just remember, there's a difference between a trinket and a treasure. Now, I think we need to start a revolution. Help, help, I'm being repressed. I want to start this revolution of minimalism. Now I know you're probably thinking, uh, yeah, Robin, you're a little late to that. That's actually been done. I mean, there's this person and this person and this person, and they have already started that. I'm actually not talking about a revolution of extreme minimalism. I'm actually talking more about a revolution of a different kind of minimalism, what I like to call reasonable minimalism. Now, a lot of people, when they think of minimalism, they think of a very stark blank space something that's not comfortable, maybe there's nothing on the walls, it isn't lived in. You might even imagine just having like one of everything for every person in the house. So maybe there are like three people in your house, you have like three cups and three plates and then you wash them between every meal. It sounds like a lot of extra work really and a lot of extra washing. Uh, that may work for some people and I am not at all dissing that, but I don't think it works for most. You also might picture yourself going without but that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reasonable minimalism. The whole point of my reasonable minimalist revolution is to get back to where we should be. Our homes that should be peaceful, a home that doesn't cause stress. Instead of coming home from the end of a stressful day and feeling more stressed, you actually come home and you feel calm and relaxed. It is a home that is peaceful and fills you up instead of tearing you down. Also, no more flagrant consumerism in our revolution. Instead of going shopping as a thing to do, how about going for a hike? 
How about spending time with friends or family or quality time alone? You also won't have a boxes of things that you are not sure why you are keeping. You won't have piles of things here and there. No closets that are just packed full. Just a home that serves you and is a place of peace. I'm going to get to the rules in a second, but let me know in the comments if you are joining me. You also probably should join our Facebook group because we are a very encouraging bunch of ladies and they are like so awesome in there. Now for the revolution, you need to make the rules, but you need to use what you keep. And I mean, use it. Probably within each year, you need to use it at least once, if not more often. One example of something that I have chosen to keep is that I have an ice cream maker and I use it a couple of times a year. I feel like it's worth it for my kids to have homemade ice cream for now, but maybe not forever, but for now. And I, I probably won't keep it forever. Your clothes, do you wear them? Do you wear your seasonal clothes? You might not. Now the odd piece you may not even use once per year, but some things you might wear a couple of times a year and it is very useful. And I think that's great. I mean, ultimately the rules are up to you. You may also find that there are some things that you're like, I am choosing to not have this and you prefer not to own it. I always talk about lending and borrowing things. I love my beloved bolt cutters. So you're going to see that again, but I got them for $20. Okay. They were used and they were perfect when I was building my trellis. I want to lend those out to people because I like to lend things to people if they need it. But I also like to occasionally borrow something instead of having to buy it. Although I will remind you, take very good care of the things that you borrow and also only lend things to people that will take care of your stuff. Now I am completely digressing here, but I want you to join me in the revolution. If you need help for actually how to declutter, I have my declutter checklist, which I will take you through the steps that I ask when I am decluttering and I will link that below. Now we can run into some trouble when we are decluttering and I made a video all about that here. So click it to see, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and join the revolution. Bye.